our contributor Jenny Horn to the show here, and let's talk some Home Depot. I have the chart of Home Depot up on our platform, and for reference, I left the 200-day moving average, which we talked about Walmart being lower than, and it being a significant level. This isn't even in the same stratosphere anymore as where Home Depot is trading, even with its recent volatility. So Jenny, I think that highlights just how impressive the last two months have been for Home Depot. Absolutely. And I mean, it's fallen about 2% this month so far, but it's still up over 20% year to date. So this stock has seen continued strength into 2021 that many of these other retailers, of course, like you just mentioned, Walmart, have not. And there's just so many factors contributing to Home Depot's strength. I mean, there's so many things that are working in its favor, other than the price activity, of course, we saw with some of these inflationary pressures last week. But one of the strongest arguments for Home Depot is in the last year, our homes have become our offices, our schools, our churches, our restaurants, our gyms. So this has, of course, sort of sort of boosted the demand for so many of our homes to be improved upon or maybe added to, which has fueled the sentiment behind Home Depot and also Lowe's because just the strong demand for their goods was so high. Another thing is the housing market fundamentals support really strong home repair and remodeling activity, as well as consumers still have leftover stimulus money. Plus, we're seeing some pretty significant inflation in the commodities. So, for example, these high lumber costs, many are saying, could actually boost their comp sales in this most recent quarter, which we'll report tomorrow before the market opens. But the pandemic has also accelerated household ownership among millennials, which were sort of this key demographic that were sort of late to the game in buying homes. So all of these things have boosted Home Depot over the last year. But now many are wondering if the housing market can really remain Resilient. So for earnings tomorrow, analysts are expecting about 298 a share on revenue of just over $34 billion. And just to signify how much this would grow from last year, they reported about 208 a share on revenue of $27 billion. So they're expecting pretty significant year-over-year -year growth. And their revenue actually in the fourth quarter grew by 25%. And I thought this was really interesting because the company's compounded annual growth rate for the last decade has been about 6.9%. So just to put into picture how much they have grown over the past year compared to the last decade. Now, some are saying that this sales momentum will slow. Of course, it will eventually normalize back with what has been a long-term trend for Home Depot. But I mean, lately, the stock has received a lot of positive noise from analysts ahead of this report, just saying that this home improvement trend is one that many have found sort of a liking to, and it's not going anywhere. So the average rating for Home Depot right now among analysts is a buy, with its consensus target price target being about 314 a share. But then Morgan Stanley actually recently raised their price target to 340 a share from 320, which is what our first tweeter today talks about. So that says, Morgan Stanley has upgraded Home Depot to overweight with houses flying off the market this past year. I expect home improvement to follow. After two days of losing value, I think this is a great buy and their earnings report comes out next Tuesday. So I'm expecting big things. So I think it's important to keep in mind Morgan Stanley's price target is just $5 below their all-time high. Now it's stocks fallen about 2 percent today to trade about 316. So this would be significantly higher than where the stock is currently trading, which is what our next tweeter talks about sort of being actually an issue and takes a more bearish stance on Home Depot ahead of earnings. Saying, Home Depot, unless the market decides to be generous, I'd plan for a dump after this earnings release. Lumber prices have been causing Home Depot and Lowe's to shoot up like crazy. Now we're settling at the first retracement just in time to run back up to all-time highs before earnings release. I look for a move down to 307. So with the stock trading about 316 a share, going back back down to 307, I mean, this would be surprising to me, given the stock's price activity over the past week. It has seen, of course, this volatility. I would say that maybe the pullback it's seen is actually a good thing ahead of these earnings report because it could mean that some of this negativity is already priced in. But of course, you know, right now we're seeing wild things in the market, Kevin. Of course, it's hard to tell. But I would say that given the move to the downside in the last week, I actually think it set itself up, set itself up in a good position for earnings. Yeah, Jenny, this is a tricky one. And you, you kind of just described why it's tricky. Obviously, this sector of the economy is flying, right? As mm -hmm. Home improvement spikes. You, we, you know, it's well publicized what's happening with lumber prices. Everything about home improvement is strong. The question is, can it 
Can it be sustained? And, you know, when I look at the chart, it gives me a little more pause because, that you know, that chart looks like um, a, a game of musical chairs where the music stopped, right? And everyone's kind of looking for an out after an unbelievable run in this stock. But the stock is, what's that, 20%? off its high it's 30 bucks off its high so 10 percent. sorry off its high so it's not like it hasn't already corrected slightly so this is a tricky one obviously you know then there's with all this then there's the market share battle with lowe's right and lowe's has become a real competitor to home depot but i think their ability to maintain the high level of uh, sales that they've had over the last year in 2020. If they can come close to that, that's really good. I think the outlook, what they're going to point to going forward is really important. And of course, um, the overall you know, continued growth, the numbers were crazy. And can they maintain it? I think that's the story of Home Depot this quarter. Can they maintain or keep it going? Everything they, they've been doing in 2020, guys. Yeah, I'm excited for this report. We'll see what happens. Stock up about 20% still, even with its recent 10% pullback on a year-to-date basis. So huge move at Home Depot, lows as well as Kevin said. So uh, we'll see how the market takes the information we get uh, and if it runs with it or if they uh, run for the exits here uh, in Home Depot. But Jenny Horn, always a pleasure, a great setup, and thanks for joining us. We say goodbye to Jenny. I want to welcome in the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, Andy Swan, to the program. Uh, good morning and happy Monday day to you, Andy. Uh, first off, first question, is this a sustainable macro trend? I think Jenny and Kevin really hit uh, the nail on the head in terms of all the macro kind of tailwinds this space has seen. Is the data showing signs of <coughs> stability for that space or was it big demand pull forward? And then the second question, maybe a little bit easier, is Home Depot the leader of this space that its charts trying to tell us it is? Yeah, it's a, it's a real good question. Um, you know, our data is very supportive of the conversation that Jenny uh, just put forth, and that is, yes, there's a huge amount of uh, pull forward demand. I'm talking about home renovations here. So just the overall consumer macro behavior of improving your home, doing something to your home. Uh, you know, we see obviously there was a huge pull forward demand, uh, a huge spike in demand when people were locked in their homes and wanted to improve their living situation accordingly. Uh, but what's interesting to me is that, you know, you can look at this chart two ways. One, you can look at it, no, it's not sustaining the growth rate or the levels that it was at this time last year. But on the other hand, the new baseline is considerably higher than the old baseline. And so that, to me, makes the argument that, uh, you know, people renovated their home, interest rates are low. And they liked the process and they liked the results. They see their home values going up. And now whether that's related to their home renovation or not is almost irrelevant because the psychological feeling is good. You have improved where you live. Mm -hmm. You're getting rewarded from the marketplace and you can continue to do so. And so when we, then when we focus in on Home Depot, we say, OK, this is a higher base. Does that hold true for Home Depot? And the answer is yes. And it's really crazy to look at this chart because this is purchase intent mentions, people talking about spending money at Home Depot. And I've highlighted uh, the last three quarters. So the, the one on the far right is this quarter they're about to report. Uh, then one square, red square to the left is uh, last year's report of this quarter. And then two squares to the left, the one uh, right there for 2019 Q1 is you know what you would kind of normally compare to and what this tells me is yes there was huge huge spike in demand and yes the company has incredibly difficult comps uh in terms of uh, this quarter versus last year but if you go back two years uh we're still significantly higher so that tells me that the company didn't just pull forward demand that and, and is now um cannibalizing itself you know, the demand is still there. We see it at the macro level. We see it at the company level. So we think Home Depot is going to have a good report, especially if you're looking at 2019 levels, so two years over a year, or, uh, you know, a decent report if you're looking uh, to last year. But I don't think anybody's really expecting the company to have uh, the type of growth rate that it was experiencing last year. Andy, my, my, my question to you is really simple here, and that is, isn't this... When we, you know, cover 
stocks on fast market, a lot of the leaders in their spaces that we've covered are showing trends just like you're showing here, which is, you know, off of the crazy pandemic highs, but trending higher, much higher, significantly higher than they were before, right? So that stickiness term, right? That number is clearly significantly higher, Any something that anyone would would be proud of if you weren't comparing it to 2020. If you compared right. it to 2019, these numbers are spectacular. But are is can they is that good enough for, for this quarter with this company? Because trading wise, you know, the stock is down 10%. And you know, last quarter they were they had good numbers and, and the stock was shaky then too. So it, you know I you know, the overall stickiness is a common theme on this show there i think this is it if i'm reading your data right and the question is is it enough andy you're, you're reading the data exactly right i i am a little concerned about is it enough because it hasn't been enough the last four quarters so you know we looked at right the last four uh earnings reports home depot ended the week lower than it started the week uh some of those were very small the last quarter was i think somewhere around six percent and so that's concerning but you know, overall health of the company, I think, is really strong. You're talking about, uh, you know, a low interest rate environment. Uh, people are on the move, and uh, the housing market is hot. So I think that there's a lot of good going for this company. So I think, you know, if I had to bet on this earnings report, I would say likelihood of a small pullback, uh, but nothing major, is probably the way I I would play it. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they buck the trend and actually move to the upside because I think the narrative is a little bit overplayed uh, on the tough comps. And I think if you just zoom out enough, you can see this company's doing really well on a long term time frame. So then, Andy, it sounds like uh, this $30, $30 pullback, this uh, 10% kind of correction we've seen over the last week maybe complicated this a little bit. You may have been a little bit more bearish at the highs. But with all that being considered, uh, I, I know that you guys are generally looking at this stuff on a longer term basis as well. It sounds like things are clicking. Things are going well at Home Depot. The macro trends are, are settling in at higher levels. We know that the movement out of cities into more suburban, uh, you know, home building and home purchasing in the millennial uh, age group is, is, is just starting to ramp up here as people are starting families and, and things just a little bit later uh, than some previous generations. But all that being considered, Andy, uh, is this one that you're a buyer on a dip more than a bet against kind of a situation here around earnings? Yes, absolutely. I would take I would take the um, earnings opportunity and increased volatility and you know some of those uh, premiums that you might see on put options going into into earnings as an opportunity uh, to either establish a position or maybe um, you know collect some premium. I think um, you know Home Depot is not going anywhere. I actually disagree with the prior tweet. I think if lumber prices came down, you'll see a lot of pinup demands for projects that are waiting on lumber prices to come back down that bring people into the store to buy a lot of other things. So I think Home Depot is really in a pretty good situation going into the summer of 2021, which surprised me uh, based on what we saw last year. I thought they were pulling forward all the demand in the world, but it turns out that was incorrect. Good stuff. Andy Swan, the co-founder of likepolio.com. We'll leave it there. This is going to be an exciting